Hey there, I'm Julie Tam, Managing Broker of Lynn Realty in Houston, and thank you for joining me for Smarter Real Estate Weekly on Wednesdays. You are here for my special series, Building My Dream Home, and we are continuing with our second of three videos about plumbing selections. Today, we're going to what I call the eating areas, so the indoor kitchen, butler's pantry slash wet bar, and then the outdoor kitchen. And I'm gonna be showing you the plumbing selections for those areas and giving you some advice on considerations when making selections for those specific spaces. Now, I mentioned this is video two of three about plumbing. So video one, which has already been posted, I would love for you to go back and watch that if you haven't seen it, because I gave you a really good thorough introduction to how to select plumbing fixtures and the different considerations that you need to have, including budget, uh, warranties and brands, style, colors, and then other considerations and details as well. And so that will really help lay a foundation for you as you're making selections. If you are building or remodeling um, either part of or an entire home uh, or buying a new home and wanting to change out some plumbing fixtures is the things that you need to think about. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start a screen share so that you can see uh, the selections that we have made for our eating areas uh, with our plumbing vendor. So here we go. We're going to start outside the outdoor kitchen. So for our home, it's a two-story home. And um, <clears throat> if you go out the back sliding glass doors off of the living room area, you will be outside where there's going to be an outdoor kitchen. Uh, we also have a door that goes out from the breakfast area. And um, the outdoor kitchen has a built-in grill and some cabinetry. Those are all stainless steel. And then um, next to it, you've got the sink and some more stainless steel cabinetry underneath that. And so for the sink, we pick stainless steel of all things. Imagine that to match the other stainless steel appliances and the cabinetry. This is the LK, which is a great uh, brand of sinks. Uh, Crosstown is the specific um, collection, 16 gauge stainless steel. And the dimensions are 16 by 18 and a half by 10 inches deep. So the 16 is the width here, 18 and a half, um, is your length and then the 10 inches is you know how high your sink is from the top all the way down to the bottom and it's a single bowl undermount sink which means undermounting below the countertop there's no lip that goes up over the countertop and they also refer to this color as polished satin so <clears throat> excuse me for the outdoors, stainless steel is a good material to use. It's more durable. Um, imagine of all the things that are flying around outside, uh, from just dust and debris to the extremes in temperature. You know, it could be cold and snowing in Houston one day. Another day, it could be 104 degrees and super hot. Um, you could have, you know, tree twigs flying around, you know, in the wind, leaves falling, um, you know, squirrels throwing acorns, squirrels themselves running across your sink and other creatures or insects. Um, and so it's going to take a lot of wear and tear. So you want something that's not going to scratch too easily um, or really, you know, be dented or easily damaged or chipped. And so stainless steel is a good one. Quartz is also good for outdoors is, is what I've learned um, through my research. And then of course, to match this is what's going to go down into that hole at the bottom there. It's the deluxe all metal kitchen strainer, uh, V-shaped brushed stainless steel by Mountain Plumbing Products. So the reason we went with this, and we are not having a disposable for the outdoor sink, is because my husband's idea was, you know, if there was ever any food that people pour down the sink outside when we have our outdoor barbecues and such, we don't want it to go down into, you know, the pipes or even into a disposal where bits and pieces are still down there because that would attract insects and other creatures to try to go crawling down the sink drain. And then if we go outside and turn the faucet on, you know, you can already see the look on my face, gross. Stuff will start crawling out. So <clears throat> I agreed with him to have this. So it pretty much catches most of your food out there. And, um, you know, the goal is not to do, you know, too heavy of like dishwashing type stuff out there, but to, you know, bring it inside and, and stick it in the dishwasher or wash it in the kitchen sink. Of course, if it's like dripping, you know, like with blood from raw steaks or something like that, then maybe you want to kind of deal with it outside and not bring it and track it in through the floors. But um, anyway, that was our idea for that. And then this is the faucet that we chose. It is um, also matching. Uh, it's made by Dan's, which is a division of Gerber um, in the US. And it's the Amalfi, that's the particular collection. Um, one H pull down. So it has this that pulls down and is a sprayer. Uh, so you use a little 
switch there to adjust. Kitchen faucet with snapback retraction for that pull down sprayer. And it's 1.75 gallons per minute. So that just shows you like the water pressure, like how many gallons per minute flow through in stainless steel. So if you watched my previous video and saw the plumbing fixtures for our primary bath, and then when you watch the next video about plumbing, which is going to be about the secondary baths in the laundry room, you're going to see sort of a, a general consistent look that we're going for, this sort of rounded base and coming up very tubular and sleek looking. So not a lot of frills, not a lot of embellishments or ornate kind of um, uh, trim work there, and just this a very simple knob and so we really are going for this kind of modern look and a little bit transitional so not super um you know super super slick and, and streamlined where it's ultra contemporary but definitely we're on the modern side all right so the wet bar um ta-da so the exciting part of course is going to be the faucet and um, when you see the kitchen you'll understand how these go together so the wet bar um, and the kitchen are adjacent to each other in our home. So you can see, I'm not sure like exactly if you're just like standing there at the sink, can you actually see uh, one or the other? But essentially, if you're peeking around the corner from the kitchen, you can see the wet bar and vice versa. So you really want um, the two faucets to be the same style and, um, you know, just go together. And so we went for the same color as well. This is the same actual collection as the outdoor kitchen. It's the Parma, if you recognize the name, by Dan's. And it's a bar faucet, which is a smaller, shorter faucet. It's just a shorter version of the kitchen faucet. The kitchen faucet is just taller, uh, which you'll see in just a second, but it's still that single handle there with side mount um, and then 1.75 gallons per minute in brushed bronze. Now, if you've noticed some of the bronze colors I've covered, so, so far our primary bath is in this gold, you know, brushed brass or, you know, Lux brass, Lux, Lux gold, you know, they call it lots of different things. And here it's called brushed bronze. Um, and the kitchen is going to be in this color. So our, our two most important rooms of the home are this gold color. Now, here's the thing is there's a lot of different names and just as there's different names, even if you find two manufacturers who use the exact same name, say like brushed brass, for example, they're actually going to come in different shades. So it's really important that you don't just look online, but you go in person to the showroom and see the actual shade of gold, because it really ranges from being, you know, very light and subtle, having more yellow, um, having less yellow and just, just, you know, very kind of almost, I would call like a whisper gold color all the way to a very dark gold, something more ornate, or some people might perceive to be gaudy or tacky. Um, and there are some gold colors that are starting to be phased out, certain brands that are um, discontinuing the old color gold that's not as popular and kind of going to more of a lighter kind of a gold like the one you see in this photo. Um, but again, when you see this faucet in person, it's gonna look a little bit different than that, just like with paint swatches or anything else, you got to see it in person to really get a better idea. And then under different lighting, it's going to look different. If your lighting is more yellow lighting versus white lighting, you know, if you have a lot of natural light coming in, it's just going to change the look of it. Um, okay. And then over here is the disposal, which is not super exciting, but I did want to mention something about this. This is the Insincorator uh, three-quarter HP disposal by Emerson uh, Pro 750. And so the thing with this is a lot of people do not put a disposal in the bar sink because their usage of the bar sink is mainly limited to drinks. And so you don't need to grind up any food. But for us, I feel like it could be utilitarian as well, because, you know, if you're washing stuff in the kitchen sink and you're very involved, like you've got dishes, you're washing, you know, meats, but then somebody needs to wash some strawberries and now there's no sink to be used. Well, they can go to the wet bar and use that sink. So um, having that disposal there is important for that reason. Okay, let me see where it happened to. Oh, here we go. It's actually another file. So this is the Rivera Square hand hammered nickel 14 gauge sink for the bar. Oh no, where did my scroll bar go? There. Okay, I'm trying to zoom in so that you guys can see it better. Um, and so the reason we picked this, which is a silver tone, right? Um, you can see, hopefully it's big enough for you to see the hammered look, um, which is if you imagine like taking a hammer and just denting, putting a lot of dents in the sink, 
it really gives it a nice um, sparkle. Uh, as our interior designer said that the sink at the bar should be kind of like a piece of jewelry. It just dresses things up, it sparkles, it's exciting, it's fun. The bar is a place where you can kind of have fun with your design and not be as you know buttoned up and, and formal um, or even not as casual. And so it can be you know pizzazz, it can be glamorous. Um, and so the reason we chose this silver sink to go with the gold faucet is actually they do to go, they do go together. But once upon a time, designers thought that they did not go together. You either have gold or you have silver, you do not mix the two. Um, but here's a reason. This one has a lifetime limited warranty. It will not patina, meaning it won't change colors. It's a lot more functional, durable. Things are not gonna damage the surface of the sink. So we can wash whatever in there. Well, the brass, the gold version of this does patina. So it's gonna change color over time. So I was like, well, <laughs> if I'm not even going to have my original gold color, then what's the point? Like, you know, I, I like that color. I would have rather had it, but you know, kind of, you can't just have everything your way. Right. Um, that one also, the plumbing vendor said that it could not withstand acid. So anything from like orange juice or red wine or different things, you couldn't pour down into that sink. So I'm like, whoa, that really limits the number of drinks that we could, you know, pour out if guests don't finish their drinks when they come to our home. Um, so this is what we ended up choosing and the matching drain, of course. Um, let's see if I can zoom back out here. Let me see here. Oh, here we go. Uh, three and a half inch deluxe stem bell strainer in brushed stainless, okay, for the, for the wet bar. Okay, um, there's something else I wanted to say before I forget. Oh, yes. My husband and I actually went to the showroom a few times. I think it was like three times total. First time, just to browse, you know, everything that was there because it was overwhelming. Um, and the second time was to actually start to narrow down because we had looked online to make a lot of the selections kind of the one initial pass because you could take a lot more time just kind of sitting at home and each night just like looking at a room or another room and, and just kind of holistically coming together and looking at, you know, pictures online from other homes and designers and then trying to come up with kind of a cohesive plan of a look that we wanted and then going back into the showroom and verifying certain things like okay do we like the way this faucet feels like this handheld sprayer do we like um you know the look of this the, the shade of this particular gold faucet or whatnot and then you know going about it that way um really helped us so don't stress and feel like you need to make selections on your first visit. Sometimes it will take two or three or four or maybe even more, just depending on how um, many things you have to select, how decisive you are and that sort of thing. We are pretty darn decisive. And so as you can see, again, as we move into the kitchen, that same look, just like the wet bar, this is just a bigger, taller version of the Dan's Parma Cafe pull down kitchen faucet with snapback retraction, 1.75 gallons per minute, brushed bronze and the matching deck mount soap and lotion dispenser here. Um, we plan to put dish soap in there. We've got a hands-free touchless um, hand soap dispenser that is a motion sensing one because um, that way if your hands are greasy or otherwise dirty, if you've handled raw meat, for example, you don't have to sit there and touch the pump. You can just put your hands under there. And we have found that so convenient because sometimes your hands get really involved. Like it even gets up you know, onto your wrists and stuff. So it kind of limits your ability to be able to, um, you know, touch a, a, a or basically be able to get soap without touching the soap pump uh, same kind of disposal here as the bar sink and then here is our very exciting quartz lux single bowl farmhouse sink with perfect drain in the color ricotta which is basically a shade of off-white that is not cream it's a little bit more to the pure white side and it's made by lk which is the same brand that made the outdoor kitchen sink that i showed you above and so this is what it's going to look like um, they also call these apron sinks. It just brings it out more towards you as you're standing there. So this kind of lip area is where you're, you know, you're going to be leaning your chest up against uh, or your abdomen, however tall you are. And so it gives you more sink space. So the dimensions of the sink are 35 and 7 eighths inches wide. And then uh, this shorter length is 20, over 20 inches. And then it's a nine inch deep bowl. And of course, undermounted. Um, one thing I want to mention, so with quartz, okay, right here, you can kind of read like, oh, you know, UV stable acrylic resins and natural quartz high performance and, um, and all of that. So 
the quartz, the Lux line from LK, the sink is very smooth. It feels really good. The classic one is a little bit rougher and you do see a little bit of more of the um, kind of the, the flex, if you will, in the stone. Um, quartz we really like for the sink. We didn't want to have like the porcelain or the fire clay that's very hard. And if you drop a glass, you know, it's almost certainly going to shatter. Um, the stainless steel is good for not shattering things um, that you drop. The quartz is somewhere in the middle. We were just kind of tired of having a stainless steel sink because we've had that our whole lives. And so, I, although our vacation condo, we've got a we've got the um, porcelain, the white sink. But yeah, we wanted to go with quartz. It's just a, a different material, a little bit more modern. It's really you know what's in now, and it's because it's a good durable material that makes sense. Let me see what we're looking at. Okay. We're not going to jump ahead to that. So that was a quick little sneak peek for the next video. But um, let me talk a bit um, more about your sink considerations for the kitchen. So I like to have a big farmhouse or apron sink because it just gives me a lot more room to be able to wash large pots and pans. I don't want a divider, which is what we have now. Um, the divided sinks can be either 50-50, so same side left and right, or it can be 60-40 where one side's a little bit bigger. Um, but then when you have long handles to like certain pots and pans, it starts to hit the divider and you know it just makes it really inconvenient to get your stuff clean and so we really wanted to have a single compartment now there's now a new thing where your sink can be a workstation so they have um, basically like a cutting board built in where you can rest it right on top of the sink and you can remove it if you don't want it it can come with a strainer colander and different features again that's just not what we're used to that's not how we function we'd like to have a cutting board on top of the kitchen counter the, the sink is for washing, you know, that's really what we use the sink for. And so when someone wants to go wash their hands as they're prepping food, or they want to wash actual food or dishes, you know, I don't want to be sitting there, you know, chopping my produce or meat, and then people's dirty water splattering up on top of the food. And so to us, it just doesn't mix, you know, we want to be able to have a sink where it's just open to whoever's washing, whatever. And then when you're chopping and prepping and doing other stuff, straining, you know, you're just doing it away from the sink. If you want to strain, I just have a colander. I can put in, strain it, you know, pour it out into a bowl like strawberries. And then the colander is just, it's done, but it's not attached to a workstation in the sink. Of course, that's an extra, uh, an extra cost. Um, it's not, you know, an exorbitant cost. So it's certainly something that where if you feel like that is how you function, that's your lifestyle in the kitchen, then maybe it's right for you. Okay, I am going to um, go ahead and stop the screen share. And I just mentioned a couple more things. And one is that, so for an interior designer and how you might bring them into a process like this, not just for plumbing, but all sorts of selections, you know, some people have the interior designer sit in the driver's seat where they have them make selections, create mood boards, and then show you what they've come up with. And you kind of, you know, give them feedback to either tweak it or maybe you love it and that's what you want to go with and so that's one approach our approach has been um sort of on the other end where we are in the driver's seat we are actually looking at all the selection possibilities and making our selections um for what we think would look good and then running them by our designer to see what she thinks and um so far she has liked all of our selections you know on the plumbing for example um i would say for like tile which we've already started working with her on there's a couple of them where she was like i think i like this one that you picked and not the other one but it hasn't been where it's like i don't like anything you've picked um i think that you need to start from square one or go pick something else entirely for this room so we're really on the same page which not to toot our own horns but that means my husband my husband and i have pretty good taste um but yes we're, we're really going for a pretty um you know consistent look through the home because you've got to have that you know, that integrated look where it, it you know, it just everything works and flows together. But then there's also variety, it's not boring. So we have different colored fixtures for different rooms. So, um, you know, so far you've seen more of the golds and some of the stainless steels, but pretty soon you're gonna see some black and some silvers brought in um, and, and different shades of them, okay? And um, that's as we get into the next video, which is taking you through our laundry room and our secondary bath selection. So very exciting stuff to come and some uh, craziness re re revolving around the, the powder room uh, vanity uh, with supply chain issues and stuff like that. So some, some lessons learned there, not that we did anything you know, wrong or that we should have learned a lesson, but, but this is lessons for you as you, if you are launching into this process and things to just kind of watch out for, okay? All right, so thank you so much for watching. Um, 
I don't remember if I mentioned this, I don't think so, but if you like this video, then click like, and if you enjoyed the video and you want to learn more, then please go ahead and subscribe on Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn. You can watch the videos. I post uh, the same ones there as well. And then I hope you'll comment or send me a message. Uh, let me know what you want to see. Let me know what you think, um, any questions that you have, and I'd be happy to answer and hope you have a great week. So thanks so much for watching Smarter Real Estate, where I arm you with practical strategies to be a smarter buyer, seller, tenant, or landlord, and also take you on my real estate adventures. Cheers.